We're growing we up. We do, we do. And the truth is, there is no such thing as a year, the year that you get to where you say, I've finally arrived. Mm. I am this many years I've old. it all out. I've got it all figured out. Yeah. There's not a year that works like that. I love the way that Paul said it. He said it in Philippians 3.12. He says, not that I have already obtained all of this. Yes, he was talking to the church in his letters to the church about what godly living looks like, what it is that we're supposed to shift in right. our lives to follow after Christ. And he said, it's not that I've already, I've already att- obtained all of it. It's not that I've already attained my goal. Yep. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. He's saying, I keep growing. I keep moving towards the purposes that God has for me. I keep pressing in. Because the truth is, every year is a year of new growth. Every year is a a milestone moments kind of year. Um, Any of you that have kiddos, you know that when you take them to the doctor when they're fresh, when they are new, new little babies. Forgive me, any pediatricians in the room or watching it, Katie at Woodlands, forgive me. But we all have those very difficult and hard for the first time parent mindsets of, my kids have to reach this milestone right at this moment, right? Those are really, really hard to wrap your minds around because we all grow at different paces. But what's important is that those milestones do still exist. Yes. And we should all have milestones in our lives of the things that God is doing and see that he's going to do even more. So every year should have milestone moments. There are new opportunities in every year. There are new purposes. There's new focus that we are to have. And that's why we kick off this series every year called The Reset, because part of resetting is a, is a begin again. It's a restart, but it's also a fresh perspective for what God has done, what he's faithful to complete, yeah. and to know with confidence he's already writing victory in our future and writing victory in our story. So today we're celebrating. We're celebrating God's faithfulness. Yeah. We're celebrating everything he has done, but we're also committed to continuing to grow. Yeah. We're going to be continually growing as a church, not just in numbers and all that stuff and metrics and all that, no, and salvations and all that stuff. We want to celebrate all those, but we want you to be discipled. Yeah. We want you to grow in faith. We want you to have great grace on your life and be like, man, I feel stronger this year. So we're committed yeah. as your pastors to grow in vision. Mm-hmm. We're committed to grow in the pursuit of God's plan for this house specifically yeah. and personally. Yeah. And one way that we can grow is simply by, there's certain words I don't like, but simply by not getting stagnant. Mm. We don't want to get stagnant as a church. We don't want to get stagnant and just sync up our lives to a religious perspective because the truth is that muddies the waters and puts a almost a lid or a wet blanket on our fervency yeah it it almost smothers out a passion and a fire for the things of god so this weekend is a reminder maybe you've gotten a little stagnant Mm. maybe something has tried to mess with your fire maybe you haven't been as passionate for the things of god like you have in the past and so this weekend come on somebody say i'm growing up Growing up. The truth is the word grow, it kind of can be a little bit of a dirty word. And, and there's almost this mindset of like, I'm grown. I'm a grown up. Like, I'm a grown man. Like I'm grown up, but we don't always love the word. You need yeah. to grow. You need to grow up. I'm having conversations with our oldest right now about growing into becoming a man, like what bills are. Amen. Praise the Lord. And like there's little fundamentals because we need to prepare him now to recognize you're growing but there's going to be a season where you grow up. Yeah. And the truth is we just don't like that word. We don't like it because sometimes we look at ourselves as grown-ups, right? We are defined by society as grown-ups. So it's hard sometimes to think if you're considered a grown-up that you still need to grow up. It's really hard to put those two things together. Often we think of children needing to grow. Like we just mentioned our teenager. He needs to grow, right? He needs to grow. But as adults, sometimes we don't. Why? Why do we do this? Why do we look at this word growth like it's an ugly word? And that is because growth can be uncomfortable. And we don't like things that make us uncomfortable, right? None of us like to be uncomfortable. Is there anybody in here that's like, I like being uncomfortable? No. It's called July here. Just the heat. (laughs) 
<laughs> we were with our we were with our little, our kids and we were swimming. Can I say this? Am I allowed I don't to know. Say? I don't I'm know what say. you're gonna say. We were swimming and our daughter Daphne said, Dad, there's a, a some water running down your quack. Anyways, cause she said, meant the his spine. His spine crack. All right. So growth can be uncomfortable. Hey, you signed up to do this with me today. I did. I love you. Anyways, it's uncomfortable. Gro wave at us if growth is uncomfortable. Growth can be uncomfortable. There's a stretching. There's, it's uncomfortable to have to grow and trust God even when you can't track him. And the thing about growth is that there are so often these growth spurts. There are seasons of really intense growth, right? If you have a teenager, then you know what I'm talking about because that is a season of very obvious growth, right? You can yeah. see it on a teenager. Maybe you can even remember some of those parts of growth spurts as a teenager. They're, they include headaches and the joint pain and the body aches and the moodiness and the crazy hunger, right? I mean, like, that's a Tuesday All the me. teenagers in the room said amen. And the older you get, if you sleep funny, your neck's out. If you sneeze, okay. weird, like I think I threw out a rib. Mm. Growing pains. Right. It's uncomfortable. The it's point uncomfortable. is it's uncomfortable. It is. So here is what we want to talk about on this ninth anniversary. Just like Hope City is growing, God wants each of us to grow too, which means he's going to take us through our very own yep. growth spurts Yes, ma'am. in an effort to advance us in life, in an effort to take us to the next level. How many of you look forward every day to the new favor, the new level of on, grace, new level. the new level of strength, the new level of joy? Well, God just may make you uncomfortable first in order to get you there. And I honestly, we honestly believe this, that the reason why God gives us direction without all the details is because if we knew how it would be uncomfortable and there would be discomfort moments, we probably wouldn't commit to the process. It's so true. Come on, seriously. How many guys, God's giving you direction. Like you're like, I've got, I've got direction. I know God's with me, but you don't have all the details. That's why last week I talked about you don't have to fully know the details or even his full plans to know and trust in his promise. Because the truth is, if he gave you a glimpse of, I need you to do this, and you're going to accomplish big things, and this assignment is way bigger than you, but a year from now, oh, it's going to get real uncomfortable. You're like, it's okay, Lord. Choose somebody else. Amen. <laughs> Because we don't always love it. We don't always love it. But we believe that God is calling us to a graduation moment of yes. sorts for today, for this special day. Because we all see it as special for Hope City, but it is special for you too because you are Hope City. You are what walks. You walk with the power of what this house holds. So we want to help you realize the benefit of that growth spurt that you are maybe in currently or maybe even that moment that the Lord is revealing to you and you're kind of avoiding where when you felt like God's like you got to grow here I yep. need you to I need you to get rid of that I need yep. you to set that aside I need you to stop doing that I need you to change your mindset in this area so often we do what he just said and we're like yeah we're just gonna avoid it but there are great benefits in those growth spurts there are if we open up our hands there to see what God is benefits doing in the growth spurts. you may want to take a picture of that there are great benefits yeah. In the growth spurts, you said graduation moments, and we had to coach our kids. Brecken's a freshman; he's his freshman year, and so I had to tell him, like, "Hey, there is a, a, an ebb and flow to this. There is a bottom of the next new season, yeah. and then you're going to climb again, and you're going to be a senior. And the freshmen are going to be like, there is, he's a senior. But then you're going to start all over again, and you're going to become a freshman again. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to climb to the very top in college, and you're going to be a senior." And then you're going to start all over again. You're going to start at the bottom of a new career. We are always growing. Yeah. We just have to recognize the benefits and the growth spurts. Yeah. But if we're honest about it, and I pray that you would ask the Holy Spirit to reveal and identify this weekend, God, what's some areas of my life that I can improve in? Come on, wave at me if there's areas of your life that you can improve in. Come on. I got 60% of the room. Wave at me if there's areas of your life. <laughs> That you can improve in. It's true. All of us have areas we can improve in. We all want the improvement part, but we don't want the, I've got to put in work for this improvement. Yeah. Because we love to look at others and be like, man, if I could just get to where he is, if I could just get to where she is, but they put some work in. Yeah. And I love, Dave Ramsey always says, you can't have the life, uh, live like no one else. So one day you can live like no one else. Yeah. 
And he's talking about putting boundaries and things in place and accountability in place so that you can take care of what you need to do, improve on what you need to improve on, so ultimately you can get to where you're going. But it takes work. Improvement and growth takes W-O-R-K. That's spelled work. <laughs> I'm so love you. The truth is growth can be pretty confusing, though. It can and when be. we talk about this at times, Growth can be very challenging, and there's confusing parts about growth that can be a little scary. And I want to add, too, on one thing that you just said. You talked about how, um, I keep thinking about it, so sorry to interrupt here, but you talked about how in, pause, You are giving me the hand of silence. I'm squeezing they his can knee. can see it. I'm squeezing. Ladies, wives, you give your husbands the hand of silence. You're yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. That was more I'm thinking. Saying too that much. wasn't That wasn't the silent saying one. Too much. But I was thinking. This is the shoulder. This is how we're gonna we're gonna collaboration. Each the rest of the time. There's plenty of distance so that we have an arm's length. No matter what storms we go through, we're oh. united. My God. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. So it, you talk about challenging and yeah. confusing yes. because we do go through those seasons like our freshman where you're on top and then you're not, then you're on top and then you're not. Yeah. God is going to take you through those cycles whether you want to be in them or yes. not because he wants you to grab it and he doesn't ever give up on the hope that we will get it, on the hope that we will step into oh, what I he has that. for us. It's going to keep coming back around, but we have to choose to get it. We have to choose to see it in the moment so that the next time we're on top, we're on top with power. We're yes. on top with an understanding of what God's doing. We're on top with a different level of confidence that God's moving in a way that maybe we don't see. And when we go through it, we have to make a conscious choice to grow through yeah. it. The God, how come you keep taking me through this same, because he's like, because I need you to grow through this, so three years from now, you're not repeating the same cycle. Yeah. Oh, that's a good word. Good. Thanks for interrupting. That was worth you're it. You're welcome. Okay. So here's a question. Why does growth have to be so uncomfortable? Number one, because God has our full attention outside of our comfort zones. That's so good. Write that down. God has our full attention like outside of our comfort zones. Because if everything is just moving along, life is decently good, I'm good right here, I don't want to ruffle any feathers, I just want to stay in my own lane, the truth is that these things, these things that God wants to unlock in your life, the, the favor, the perseverance, the fight, Everything that he wants to do in your life and through your life, the truth is you're not going to find it in a comfort zone. That's right. And that is the human condition. It is. Nobody loves being uncomfortable. That's why I asked you earlier because I wanted you to think about it. Nobody loves it. But when we get comfortable, yeah. when we find ourselves in that rhythm of comfort, yeah. we go into cruise control. We go into doing things our own way. Yeah. We go into making the plans that we know we can accomplish. Yeah. There's not this big, great expectation of what God's going to do in that space because we're just in a rhythm and a routine of what we know we can do. We are living within the realm of our own ability in a comfort zone. Love that. And it, there's not really, I mean, truly, I'll ask you, but is there really room for God in the midst of your comfort zone? There's not. There's not room when we feel like we have figured it all out. Because when you feel that you have it all figured out, that's when pride starts to creep in. Yep. That's when your own ego starts to creep in. Yep. That's when you start saying like, hey, God, I got, I got this one. Got He's this. like, okay, cool. Let me know how that works out for you. Like, yeah. you sure you don't want to include me? Because the truth is, in those comfort zone moments, in those moments, we begin to rely on our own strength. Yep. And the Bible is very clear about not leaning on our own understanding. Mm -hmm. And that's why we take every opportunity that we can to say out loud, I didn't do this. God did this. We are standing as Hope City nine years later because God of did the it. My saving bracelet. grace of God, because yes. of the kindness of God. It's not anything that we did. Every opportunity you have in life to acknowledge that I'm not that great, but God is. I'm not the one that excelled in this or succeeded in this or had oh so much wisdom to be able to accomplish this. It is because of a good, good yes, yes, father. Yes, yes. And your gifts, your gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Yeah. And your gifts that he's placed in your life that do open up doors, your big personality, your quick wittedness, your skill set, the brilliance behind how you operate. But the truth is, don't get it twisted and think those gifts are your gifts. Right. 
don't think that, that that's just, that this is the way I'm wired. Every chance we do, I mean, literally, every chance we have an opportunity to do this, we do it with our kids. That's why we wear this bracelet that says God did it. Yeah. God has breathed on this church. He has flexed and thrown his weight around the room. He has proven his faithfulness time and time again. So anytime we're like, oh, I'm glad that we were able to. No, as a willing vessel, we're grateful. But one of my fathers in the faith, I told you all this before, he says, often you should walk by a mirror and look in the mirror and say, hee haw. I'm like, what? <laughs> he said, because we all love to read the stories about Paul. And you're like, I'm like Paul. Some of y'all ladies are like, I'm like Ruth. He said, the truth is, we're actually all a little closer to the donkey than to Paul. So often, you'll, my kids will be like, what, you hee-hawing in there? I'm like, yeah, I'm a little closer to the donkey than I am Paul. Because if we will reroute every single celebratory moment, if we'll reroute all the favor, if we'll give God praise every time you get that perfect parking spot, you get favor with your job, you get a promotion. It's not about your skill sets. Come on, we're going to give it God. We're going to give God the praise. We're going to give God all the full glory and all the honor. And if you don't, take that challenge. Yeah. And we look at growth like it's scary because it's the unknown, right? Mm. But growth isn't scary. Comfort zones are scary. Because no good thing ever grows in a wow, comfort wow, wow. zone. You know that word that he said earlier, um, the stagnant, stagnant word? When I think of stagnant, which I think is just a really yucky word. There's certain words I don't like. It's frothy. a gross word. Like frothy. <laughs> That's good. I don't like supple. I, don't. Are, I bet there's more, but let's go back to stagnant. <laughs> I've got like six more. So, Stick with stagnant. Stick with stagnant. stagnant is a gross word, but the reason that um, it's so gross for me, when I think of the word stagnant, I think of like an old pond oh. that has that, I'm yeah. sorry to describe this, but you know that like the Murky, green, uh, like kind of foamy looking yucky stuff on the top. Sometimes you, you find it at Galveston. Foamy. That's gross too. That's pretty gross. That is the only thing that can grow in a comfort zone. Wow. Something really yucky, stagnant. like mold. Something that seems like, oh, maybe there's a little bit of growth here, but really nothing is breathed on that. There is no fresh wind of the Spirit on that. All wow, that wow, wow. has grown there is something that is stale and not healthy for you. So growth isn't scary. Your comfort zone is a place that you should run from quickly. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. You can clap. That's okay. That was good. You're like really good. You're like a great preacher. Every time you preach, people are like, you should just go back to singing. I that's what they say to me in the I lobby. Love you. I love you. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. This is a scripture that we all probably know decently well. He's my favorite preacher, by the way. You don't um, have to tell him that. All right, that's enough. Get back to the word. The word of the Lord. Here we go. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Yep. It says, trust in the Lord. Yes. How much? With all, With your, all your heart. And lean not what? On your own understanding. On your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Submit to him. Acknowledge him. And he will make your paths what? Straight. He will make your paths straight. This scripture defines does. what uncomfortable looks like. Yep. It defines how we are called to be uncomfortable when trusting God. Because you cannot trust the Lord with all of your heart if you are at all in control of what is going Straight. on in your life. You cannot Straight. lean on not your understanding. You can't lean on the understanding of God and say, I don't have to understand this if you are in control. That is not a comfortable place. You can't submit all of your ways to God if you're still saying, I'm doing things my way. And the truth is, he will make straight your paths. That means the paths that you charted out for you were pretty much crooked and windy and all over the place and confused. But he's saying, if you surrender it to me, I'll make it straight. So good. I'll make it clear. Yes, ma'am. And that's not comfortable. And the beautiful thing is, you don't have to do it in your own strength. You don't have to. You're not in this on your own. The yeah. enemy loves isolation. He, he wants you to try to rely on yourself and your own strength. But Philippians 4. That's what Philippians 4.13. 13. It says the same exact thing as what we just read in Proverbs. It says, I can do all things through Christ who, who strengthens yep. me. That again is saying you're not going to be strong in your own strength. You've heard us say this over and over yes. and over again. That is a position of being surrendered to God. Only when you are stretched 
to a place of trusting God because that's what trusting God looks like. It's a stretching. Only when you are stretched to a place to truly trust him can you truly rely on his strength and not your own. His strength comes when you are trusting in him, not thinking that you have it all figured out. I've talked about this illustration before, but we've got new family in the room too. We have this bag of rubber bands and a bag of rubber bands in a drawer, there's no value to that. A rubber band is only valuable when it's stretched. And a lot of times when it comes to our faith, God wants to stretch our faith to believe him for more. But in that stretching, again, it's not designed to break you. It's designed to sustain and launch you into some really good things. All of us are given the same measure of faith, but we can grow in faith. You can't microwave maturity. That's why seed before speed is so key because we want to grow in a healthy, healthy, spiritual trajectory of life. Our four-year-old is not going to wake up tomorrow and be our 15-year-old's height. No, there's a healthy pattern of growth. But here's the truth. You'll get stuck. Your growth can get stunted if you stay stuck in a rut where you are. Because what ends up happening is in our humanity, we develop rhythms and we develop routines and we only rely on the things that we know how to do. So before we step out of our comfort zone and trust God, we have to first and foremost say, hey, God, I'm going to trust in your ability before my own. Yeah. The Bible says this in James 1, verses 2 through 4 on the screens. Consider it. I consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Why? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces, this is, a, this is an amazing word, it produces perseverance. So let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm lacking nothing when I trust in the Lord. Isaiah chapter 42, 16 says, and I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known, I will guide them. Yeah. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things that I do. This is the Lord's words. I do not forsake them. He does not forsake us. So why then does it have to be so uncomfortable? Because we are hard-headed, y'all. Uh -huh. uh -huh. We are hard-headed. I think even if you are an easy person to get along with, you're still hard-headed Who's hard -headed in a in whole the lot of Come ways. Uh, who awesome. can admit Thanks that they're hard-headed? Yeah. Who, who do you know in your family? Well, no, I'm not going to ask that one. All right, here we go. I'm thinking, like doing this massive We're poll. all hard-headed. They're, like, they're yelling out their name. They're like, Kevin. You're like, okay. No. Hard-headed. Hard, I'm hard-headed. I'm hard-headed. You're definitely hard-headed. Okay. <laughs> See, it's compliments and then jabs and then compliments. And then, it's okay. It's okay. I love him. He's my buddy. I am hard-headed. We're all hard-headed because we struggle to truly truly trust God yeah, true. until we see him show up again and again and again. It's uncomfortable, but without discomfort, family, we get stuck. Yep. We don't want to be stuck. Elbow your neighbor and say, don't get stuck. Which is why you just said we see him show up again and again and again. And then you come into the room and you sing, I witness his faithfulness. Y'all know yeah. that song? You declare it. You're like, I am. I witness that. <laughs> Crying on the person next to you. And they're like, calm down. Like, because we've seen his faithfulness over and over and over again. Then we go right back out into the real world and we get uncomfortable again. So we cling back to our comfort zones. We do. But that will stunt growth in our lives. Yep. So get out of those comfort zones, okay? That's yep. number one. Number one. God likes you out of those comfort zones. Number two, the second confusing thing about growth is why are there so many highs and lows in growth? Why are there so many moments where you're like, I'm so excited to be growing, and then you're like, oh, this is awful. I hate this. I can't stand it. Why is that? Because number two, our thought life must be surrendered to the plans of God every day. Every single, every single day. day. Your mind is going to change with the wind. One day you're going to be happy about something and the weather, and the next minute you're going to be unhappy about the weather. It is just the way that we are because we are both spirit, yep, yep, yep. which is the eternal portion of us made by God to connect to him and to receive faith. Yep. But we are also flesh, yep. which is our carnal, sinful, weak, and temporary shell meant to house our spirit. And those two portions of us do not function the same at all. They're literally like water and oil. Like they, are. they push back against each other. John chapter 6, verse 63 says this. It is the spirit 
who gives life, this line right here, in the flesh is no help at all. Help at all. The spirit is what gives you life. Yeah. Yet we cling to and hold so tightly to our own strength. Matthew 26, 41 says, watch and pray. Because this, y'all, is for every one of us. This is a humanity scripture. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Yeah. Why? Because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. And as we grow and we learn, we begin to grow every day and we start following the leading of the Holy Spirit and not the tricks of the mind. I remember I was driving. This is actually pretty recent. And I was driving and I, I came to almost a complete stop. And then I did. I came to a complete stop and I like, blew my horn. It was getting dark. And there was this black lab. We have a golden doodle. And there was this black lab. I grew up with black labs. This black lab is like making its way a little slow across the road. I'm like, this guy right here. So I'm like, man, blow my horn. People behind me are like, come on, man. And I'm like, you're going to have to wait. And then on the other side, the traffic coming this way, she was blowing her horn. And we're like, look. <laughs> And then the closer, I was like, wait a minute. I put my brights on, y'all, for about 15 premium seconds. I stopped all traffic for a black trash bag. Yeah. So then I was like, come on around, come around. People were giving me the Houston thumbs up with the wrong finger. I'm like, it look, I promise you the movement looked like a black. It was misleading. Movement. The tricks of the mind. Yeah. Because it happens. Y'all remember the social media viral thing that went around? A few years ago, what color is the dress? Y'all remember dress. that? We actually have that picture. I would love to. Yeah, there it is. You either see white and gold or you see blue and black. What do y'all see? Shout it out. It's wild. I see both of them. Weirdly enough, I, I look back at the picture one minute. I'm like, it's white and gold. And then the next minute, I'm like, you changed it. Why did you change it? And our house was a little divided on it. She would be like, what do you see? And I was like, white and gold. She's like, white and gold. Blue and gold, like we went through the whole thing because our minds, y'all said we lost the room. We did. Our mind, take the picture They can't down. even believe it. Take it down. Our minds. Our minds mislead us. Mislead us. And we yeah. can be misled, but the spirit, watch this. The spirit, the spirit of God, when our mind, that's why the week one of reset, I talked about resetting your mindset. Because when you reset your mindset, it changes the way you speak. Yep. And ultimately it changes the trajectory of your life. Your mind can play tricks on you, but it connects. When we connect our heart, our mind into unity with God, it brings more clarity. Yeah. So we have to surrender our thought life. Say we have to surrender our thought life. We have to surrender our thought life. And the third one, the third confusing thing about growth is why doesn't it feel more satisfying? Wow. Sometimes we get to the end of a growth period and we're like, ah, this is amazing. I feel like I'm on the top of the world. And then other times we're like, I feel just absolutely exhausted. Or you've and grown spent. and it feels like you're starting all over in a new growth period. Yeah. So why does it feel so uncomfortable? Because number three, the more we grow in relationship with God, the more we desire his presence. Mm. The more we become dependent upon his presence, the more we have a need for him. And just like a growing kid has hunger pains, when you are growing in Jesus, you will be hungry for so the good. things of God. You will want more. You will feel like that was amazing, but I need more of you, God. Yeah, I yeah. need to understand you more. That's I right. need more understanding of what you have ahead for us. Yes. Psalm 73 verse 25 says, whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. So there are wonderful things that we have on this earth. This is my best buddy. And I have, we have four wonderful kiddos. But my greatest desires in life can't be satisfied by them. If I expect wow. them to meet my needs, yes. then I will break them. Because they were not designed to do that. Ooh, that's a word. But that's we good. were designed for dependence with God. We were so designed That's to great. need him. Matthew 5 and 6 says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. When we need the Lord and we recognize the need that we have, it's there whether you see it or not. When you recognize the need that you have, he will fill you with all of the things that you didn't know that you needed. That's so good. And the key there is he will fill. Yeah. Because the truth is, and I've said this for years, if you're part of Hope City, you, you can finish my sentence, that God is not a forcer, he's a filler. Yeah. And when we make room and we don't fight the discomfort and we don't fight the growth because it's a choice, 
I don't want to grow. <laughs> the truth is, when you don't fight it, and you say, God, I trust you, and you live open-handed and recognize growth is good for us. Yeah. Spiritual growth is a necessity. It is needed and necessary. Come on, somebody shout out loud. God is stretching me. God's stretching me. Look at the person next to you and say, you're growing. Growing. And it's uncomfortable. it's uncomfortable, but the good news is good you're news. growing. You're growing. So the truth is we're going to lean and we're going to stop leaning on our own understanding. And we're going to, as a church this year, lean in and align ourselves again with his promises yeah. and his heart. That's and then we're going to allow God to fill up those spaces in our lives so we can change the way we think. Yeah. And if we are hungry for closeness and understanding, then if we aren't hungry, I guess I should say, if you aren't hungry for closeness and nearness yeah. to God's heart, then you may be stuck. You may be in a season where you're stuck. You may be allowing yourself to be satisfied by something counterfeit, Ooh. something that God did not place in your life to meet that need. Wow. We don't want that. We don't want that at all because what we want is a nearness and a dependence upon the presence of God. Amen. Would y'all close your eyes for a moment? God, this is our prayer today. God, we pray that you would meet every single one of us across every one of our campuses. Here's the truth. We want to grow. This is that John chapter 3, verse 30 moment where you increase and we decrease. But the only way you can increase is if we make a choice to decrease, to align our hearts and our lives to you. So right now, just with your eyes closed, just like a, a, as a daughter to a father, a son to a father, will you just... You can whisper it. You can just sense it in your spirit. You can say it out loud, but just say, Lord, I want to grow. And if there's any area of my life that has been stunting my growth, God, we're asking today that you would remove it. We're asking you today, God, that you would take the lid off of any area of our lives that's causing our growth to be stunted. But God, if it's a choice, if we've chosen to stay stuck in a comfort zone, God, today we surrender that to you. We don't want to stay stuck. We don't want to just be in a ditch our whole lives. God, we want to step up and step out and grow every single day so that we can be the daughters and sons that you've called us to be. Thank you, Lord. If you're in this place and you would say, I, I need the growth of the Lord. If you are here at West Houston or if you're at Katy or the Woodlands or watching online or over at additional seating and you would say, I need the growth of God in my life. I need the Lord to grow me and stretch me. Just lift your hands right here with every head bowed and every eye closed. We want to pray for those of you that are maybe in a stuck season or maybe in a stagnant season or maybe in a place where you are growing impatient with God moving in your life. God, right now in the name of Jesus, we just ask you for your grace to cover them, Father. I thank you for your invitation to draw nearer to you, to trust you more, to lay down the need to be in control and to allow you to be the Lord of our lives, to lead us and guide us yes. as a great shepherd. God, I pray for peace to overtake them, Lord. I thank you that there is a desire in them, God, to go further into your purpose, further into trusting you. Yes, and I thank you that you remove the things from their life that's holding them back. Maybe it's people, maybe it's occupations, maybe it's things that they thought they needed but you would say, I need you to look to me instead. Thank you for great grace in Thank this you. growing season. Amen. Can you stand to your feet and lift your hands towards heaven, open-handed? And I want to prophesy. I want to sing this over our lives. I want you to sing it over your own lives. One of the ways we grow is by remembering all that God has done. So I pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy of all of his saints. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life within. So I'll pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy of Your promises never fail. I've got stories I live to tell. So I'll pour out my praise again. Come on, one more time, one more time. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've witnessed your faithfulness. I've seen you breathe life within. I've seen you breathe life within. So I'll pour out my praise again. You're worthy, God, you're worthy. 
today we want to grow you can put your hands down just for a moment no one leave just yet we have one more thing we want to celebrate at the end but if you're here today this is the most important moment in the entire service the reason why we turn gymnasiums into sanctuaries is to give people somebody maybe you an opportunity to know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior the Bible says in Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 that when we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. He wipes your slate clean. He throws all of your issues, cleans your slate, throws out your iniquities and your struggles as far as the east as the west, never to throw them in your face again. So maybe you're the first invitation. You would say, Pastor Daniel, because we have two invitations. The first is this one. I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but today I want to commit my life to him. Maybe you're the second one and you would say, I have asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life before and I have turned and gone in the other direction. And today I would say, I want to surrender my life again to his plans and his will for me. If you are either of those, either of those, we're talking to you today. We're gonna pray. And this is what we believe. We believe that when we unite together as a church family, we hook our faith up with maybe those who want to give their lives to the Lord for the first time, or you've been caught up in the prodigal life and you're coming home. I'm going to count to three. One, I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, if that's you, three, would you lift up your hand? We're looking all over the room. I see you and you. I see you and 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 all the way in the back. I see you. Come on, Home City. Can we give God praise for all? I see my friend. Incredible. I see you back there. Come on. We're all going to pray this prayer together. Say it out loud. Jesus. Today is my first day of wholeheartedly committing to walking with you. Here's my sin. Here's all my shame. Here's all my struggles. Here's all my issues. I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for hanging on that cross, exchanging your life for mine so that I could live a life of hope and of freedom. I confess you now as my Savior my Father, and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, make some noise.